Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Feels good today in the house of God. You know, God has never failed me. Come on. He's never lost a battle. Can't go wrong. Turn your life over to God. We're going to have a good time today in church. We got this young group up here going to be playing and singing. It's wonderful. Brother, brother Malachi down there. Now, uh, Malachi, he said he'd take up an offering. But, you know, that was, that was when there wasn't a bunch of people in here. <laughs> That's okay. Next time, he'll do it next time. You know, I was about as shy as they get. They, uh, yeah, you can, you can go along with your brother, but you can get along with him for that long. We hired a man one time at work, and we came. I came. We came in there to interview him, and it was a, a man by the name of Bobby Kern. And walk in there, and my family had went to church with him years ago. And I walk in, and he goes, "I know you. You were that little boy that never would leave his mama's side." And I'm like, "Yeah, that was me. <laughs> I knew I was out there. Five sisters. But God is good. God is good, and He is for you." And he has never failed. You can trust him. You can trust him with any problem you have, any issue you have. He has no alternative motives. He's not in it for himself. He's in it to help you. He wants to help you. He wants to give you life and life more abundant. The good life is what he wants to give you. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to, to, to have all these things that he, he's promised it to you. Just, just, just make a decision in your mind today to say, God, I'm going to live for you Amen. from this day forward. Yeah. If I fail, I'll get back up. Get back up and do it again. Yeah. Sister Hannah, I don't know if safe and Texas belong in the same sentence, but I'm happy for you. And uh, God's good. God's good. So let's take up an offering. We're going to sing. God's good today. Yes, yes.
thank you, Jesus. We're singing that song. My mind just goes to all the all the times that I was found myself in a spot to where I didn't know a, a way out, and God made a way out. He works in miraculous things. He likes to get you into a place to where you have nothing, no direction to go but to Him. Praise the Lord. Sister Debbie's going to sing for us today. Y'all may be seated. I just got to bless them as they sing today. I, I started to play around on this song on the piano, and <clears throat> it's going to be one of those songs that I get to cry in because it's my, <laughs> it's my testimony, and so I asked Sister Susie to play it. So we're going to get through this. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm saying 
Praise the Lord. Well, it's more than just a story. This is real. This is the real thing right there. That's what I like, some singing with some, some passion there and some, some realness. That's a testimony in itself right there. God can change anyone's life. Well, Brother Erickson, I'm kind of curious and a little afraid. <laughs> Just because he's preaching out of the same passage there, so it's either going to go together or... Yes. We're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, John, thank you for doing that this morning. I know it's a certain sense of uh, fear and apprehensiveness when you all of a sudden get down to the day when you have to sit there and teach. Uh, but I am, I think it's been healthy. It's a good, puts a good flavor in the church to have more. And I wanted to say to everyone, thank you for being here today. And um, we are so thrilled for all of our guests and everyone and uh, you are no longer guests now. Now that you've been here several times, uh, you are no longer guests. And so um, we are just glad that you're here. So turn with me this morning to the book of Psalms, chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1. And I'll just read the first three verses, okay? <coughs> I'm not going to look at John once through this message, so I don't have to see him smirking at me. <laughs> Amen. Great to have you all here. This is what a church is all about. And I'm so glad to know that I uh, see the growth in the church and development in our, your lives. And, and this is what it's all about, folks, is that we are growing a kingdom for God. Amen. All right, so Psalms 1 and 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I want to preach to you about this today, the kind of church I need. The kind of church I need. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray that you bless right now. Thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that you are more than blessed today. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. We give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you, Lord, for touching and healing the sick. Thank you, Lord, for encouraging those who could not be here today. Thank you, Lord, oh God, for the anointing of your word this morning at Snack Chat and, and all of our classes. Lord, thank you for what you're about to do now. We give you thanks and praise. Lord, we need your help. We need your direction now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The kind of church I need. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Jesus, one day in his ministry on this earth, <clears throat> went into the temple, and seemingly from all I can read in Scripture, there was no pre-planned schedule. It's like as if he went up to the front and took a scroll, opened it, and knew exactly what he was looking for. And he began to read out of Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Now, just imagine this with me because I'm going some on possibly what I haven't read in the Word of God, but it wasn't, it wasn't seemingly a big hoedown. 
It was a time of quiet when Jesus walked up to the front and there took that scroll and, and opened it and began to read out of Isaiah 61. I, I don't read where, where it was a, a worship service and they were hanging from the chandeliers. I don't read where they were running around the aisles. I mean, it was just your, I don't know of any times like that in the Jewish traditions. I'm not saying it never happened. I'm just saying I'm not aware of it. But all of a sudden, Jesus gets up there and reads Isaiah 61 and 1, 2, and 3. And he rolls the scroll back up, lays it back on the table, turns to the people and said, This day, these scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing. I don't know about you, but I, I'm starting to come around in my old age to realizing that there's some things we can proclaim because God has already given them to us. There's some things we can stand on today because God has already promised them. We don't have to go back and say, well, was I, am I good enough? Have I kept myself from sin? Did I fall in that same trap this week or did I do better? Oh, no, my friend, absolutely, immediately, we can call on the Lord and get our heart right with God. We can pray and we can repent while we're walking. We can pray in the taxi cab. It doesn't matter where I am. I can say, God, please forgive me. And he does. Because there are potential scriptures in the making, waiting for them to become something alive in 2024. I need a church today that will allow me to expand my today. I need a church today that will allow me to try some things out. God's not going to strike you dead when you stand upon the word. God's not going to cut you down, Buck, when you quote the scriptures to the devil. He's not going to tear you away and say you're no good. On the contrary, he wants to see those things fulfilled in your life. Somehow today, we've got to turn a corner on this and begin to realize this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. You know, if you're waiting to get good, it'll never happen. You can always, the devil is, a, is sitting on your shoulder. He's happy to tell you what's wrong in your life. He frequently will remind you what you've been bad about. Listen, if we leave it up to the devil, none of us are going to be saved. He needs a bigger pool party. <laughs> I'm preaching today that what God brought to us was that he would give us every facet of our needs as human beings today into the house of God, into the potential that this should be the year of the Lord, that, that now is the time, Hebrews says. Today is the day of salvation, Hebrews tells us. Today, I can't be waiting for tomorrow. Oh, uh, Bill Erickson, when, when things get better and I get my life a little more organized, uh, then I'll start living for God. No, no, no. God wants you to live for God while you're in the pit. He wants you to live for God when everything's looking bad. He wants you to live for God and test him and see if he won't deliver you. I'm talking about the kind of church I need today. I'm hoping it's the same kind of church you think you need today. So he knows the makeup of a human being. He knows that. Come on. We've got our problems. Got our strengths that we think are strengths that may be our weaknesses. Got our weaknesses that God is just fixing to turn around and make them a strength. We just can't go by our feelings. You just can't go by, by what our culture says. There's some things that our culture is saying right now that I, I just want to profoundly deny today. And I'm not going to go into all of them. I just want you to know, I don't have to live that way. I'm working very hard to move away from that subject. <laughs> Wash me and make me clean. <laughs> I think
think of when the Lord came, he, he said, I am going to give and bring healing. It's going to be able to help you with your past things you've had to face in life. It's going to cover those areas where you've got that bruising on your arm and your skin isn't broken, but, but you are so sore and so tender. Those knots that we can't see, those things going on in our bodies that we, we don't know for sure what they are. Can I tell you today, he, he sent his word to heal them, the Bible said. He sent the word of God, amen, that it might become alive in our lives. My friend, I'm not promoting a, a book on your coffee by a stand today. I'm providing a life of experience where we taste and see that the Lord is good, that we dive in the middle of our issues and, and say, it's okay, God is for me. Who can be against me? I choose Jesus today. We need a church today, oh, in Chelsea, Oklahoma, that is going to be able to bring anybody in, anybody who wants to. Oh, come on and find out if my God won't do what he promised. We were in Bible study last week and started talking about some events that happened in, in, in Samuel. Oh, my goodness. But what we found in our Bible study, light to my life, was that there were all these major principles that happened in David's life that we are living today with the same promises. Oh. Some things we shouldn't do, <laughs> right? But there were also things that David did that we should do. And so God takes the chains that are wrapping around people's lives, all the habits and the things that are going against us, the things that have dug a pit that we're falling into, a hopelessness, our habits that have formed and keeping us from being able to have that freedom that we are looking for. Oh, my friend, Jesus Christ came to set the captive free. He wasn't talking about uh, only a prison cell, for I know that God is able to work in men's lives and bring them out of the prison cells. But he also was talking about those mind games, those issues of life that we're trying. I don't want to do that anymore. And yet I keep finding myself going back to it. Why? Because, oh, the devices of this world are wicked and vile. Hear me today. God wants great things in your life today. Amen. Oh, the Lord is for you today. Amen. But all these things today, I can talk about the completeness of God, that he has everything under control. Everything that could happen in my life, there is a way through it. We as humans don't want to ever get into the problem, do we? But the word of God was made to take us through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Sometimes we have to go through that valley of death. Amen. I wish we could do away. I wish we could say all oh, Christians never have to be exposed to that, but that's not true. I'm talking today about a God who made everything available so that whatever your needs are, no matter what your age is, no matter what you're uh, going on in your life, uh, good or bad, up or down, right or wrong, there's an answer, and God wants to bring us to a place where we have victory in our lives. God isn't really that interested in what's wrong as much as he is interested in making us whole. You see, we've got all sorts of problems in this room today. But we're not better going back and trying to expose them and look at them. You don't need me as a counselor. I'm not a very good one. Wiped out of your mind, Kevin. <laughs> Going back to my joke, sorry, sorry. <laughs> How close are you to answers in your life? Just as close as you unlocking the door and realizing Jesus wants to be involved and help you. I can't say as very often in my life I've had the Lord say, Whoop. 
<laughs> Kevin, quit doing that. <laughs> but I certainly have had that still small voice say, you know what the end of this is going to be. <laughs> you're, you're getting tired of having to ask forgiveness for this. When are you going to figure out that you don't have to do it? <laughs> right? Am I the only one here? He's got our number. He's for us today. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Everything about his death, burial, and resurrection was built around us becoming like him, us coming out of the depths of sin, us coming out of the habits that have formed around us, us coming out of the problems that we face in life, and all of a sudden having life anew in him. Ah, the house of God, the kind of church I need. It's the perfect atmosphere for me to be able to come and sing praises unto God. Find out, first off, uh, that God will forgive me, that he will wash away my sins. Uh, God, I have a church with prayer today. God, I have a church that believes, oh God, today that we can praise him and worship him and give him thanks today. It's got to be a hospital for every malady. We can't be partial or biased. Whatever your need is, come to the house of God. Whatever your situation is, whether it's visible or invisible, it doesn't matter. God wants to bless in your life. Oh, and someone needs to realize God wants you to leave this place today and have that same thought process as you pray for others. It's a refuge. Oh, God showed us in the Old Testament. He had the city, seven cities of refuge, uh, where if a person committed, uh, took another person's life, uh, uh, the family of that dead person had a right to chase you down and kill you eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But God set up a city of refuge uh, that if you would run to it, uh, amen, you would have freedom from those things until you were tried fairly and judiciously. If you murdered someone on purpose, you would pay for it. But if your axe came off your pole, flung and hit somebody and, and took their life, thank God for the city of refuge. As long as you stayed there, there was peace. There was safety. There was fulfillment. There was innocence. Oh, the church has got to be the real place of peace. It's got to be a place where people can come. Oh, I can testify to peace in the church. I've seen numbers of people fall asleep when I was preaching. <laughs> One old man passed away. We'd gone and visit them over and over again. They, he had a garden. This is in Ohio, but he had a garden that was just Unbelievable. Everything's so perfect, everything's so placed. Huge vegetables and things he would pour, produce out of that. And that old man would come and sit in the same spot. Don't you get in his way. And he put his foot in the same place and rocked his foot. And when he died, they gave me the scrap of carpet where he'd been. <laughs> it was all worn down. <laughs> and I talked about the faithfulness of Brother By Bryce, By Rice, excuse me. It's a peace that's real today because our confidence is in God. It's a place of safety today because it's a place of confidence in God. Knowing I'm not waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm not waiting for God to torch me because I'm bad. But he's coming today in order to bring me help. He doesn't look for sickness. He looks for opportunity to make us whole. Love is always the process, but you love that you feel is God's, the love that you feel is God's interest in your life today. His ideal of health and wellness, that anything you have need of, he is here for you. All of our needs met. Salvation is not only a yesterday, a today, and tomorrow, but it's a forever what a confidence we have when we come in to the house of God among God's people and there find fulfillment. 
of life. It doesn't matter what your income is. It doesn't matter how much you earn. It doesn't matter if you're without a job right now. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how sick you are. It doesn't matter. We don't measure people on their sickness, nor do we measure people on their health. We measure the goodness of God today, that whatever your need is, he is going to touch your life and help you. But I bring all of that thoughts to you today to, to simply bring you around to say that this may be why sometimes the world says that religion is nothing more than a, you know, crutch. Or, or they say, oh, look at that church. They're all just a bunch of cookie cutter Christians, all same, cut out of the same mold. Everybody looks alike. Well, I refute that statement today. All of this similarity and unity of the spirit is in order to make us unique as individuals. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of today. Not that I have everything in common, but also that God allows me to be unique. Not only that we've all been washed in the blood, we've all been filled with the Spirit, we've all got hope and dreams in our life for heaven. But oh, on top of that, he's made me my own individual. He's made me today able. And that's what I just want to close today. I'm bypassing a lot of stuff because John got it all. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit, not the same fruit, in his season, not the same season the church is going through. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. This is the kind of church I want today. This is what I think Chelsea deserves. I don't want to be tied to a religion with all the do's and don'ts. I want to be tied to a group of people that want God to work and move today. What I'm interested in is when we come into the house of God, we are all pulling together saying, Jesus, have your way. Lord, help us today. Lord, speak to every person today. Oh, it doesn't matter today what's on the shingle outside the door. What matters is we are the church that believes that God wants to move today on behalf of those who have come in faith believing and he wants to move in their lives. Would you stand with me today? Next time someone says you're like all the rest, you can just say, you know as much as you look. <laughs> I may be fat, but I can lose weight. <laughs> you're just plain ugly. <laughs> and I take them to Psalms 1 and 3 and say, look here, goofball. It's my fruit, not yours. It's my season, not yours. It's the leaf that God allows to come forth in my life. Amen. And that I am going to prosper with or without your consent. Amen. God is on the throne today. He's in this place. I, I know this is kind of just a, a, a syrupy little message. I'm not giving you a lot of Bible for it today. But to hear me, God is interested in a revival in your life. Not just in this church. It'll happen collectively as we are all shooting for the same thing. But in your life today, I invite you to open your heart to God and say, Lord, I want to do this your way. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me in the blood. You need to be baptized? We have semi-warm baptism water right now. Amen. You wouldn't freeze while you're in the water. You might after you get out. Ka 
God wants some great things to happen. If I need to start running this baptistry every day of the week, you just call and we'll meet you here and, and either you or I can baptize them. I don't care. I just want people to know that there's a God today who's very interested in them. Amen. Amen. The sky's the limit. Do you know one of the things that Israel had that was similar, men and women, the old days as they each had on the bottom of their robe and they, and they tell me that there were men's robes and women's robes I don't know all I know is that is that on the bottom of every person's robe men or women it was a blue skirting that went all the way around and that blue was something that God ordained and told Moses to share and it told people Though I'm an individual, yet I'm unified. Though I have my uniqueness today, yet I am a part of a church that loves me and I love them. Amen. And it was blue because blue, now that's like the sky. The sky's the limit and what God wants to do in your life. There are, there are no hindrances today. There's no one here telling you you can't unless it's a devil. And I, I'm hoping that we have already sent him home. What I'm interested in today is for you to be released. For you to, the chains have been taken off. The fetters are gone. The healing's going on inside of you. You can rest assured it's happening now. And all God wants to do is he wants to change your thinking to help you to start to see things from God's perspective instead of what the world, our culture, and all the gainsayers have nots that we see in this world. You can't have that because you, have, you haven't got as much education as I have. Education's got nothing to do with what God wants to do here today. It's all about faith. It's all about trusting and touching the Lord and allowing Him to have His way in our life. I invite you today, not because good or bad, right or wrong in your life, but I would love to see all of us come down here today for just a moment lift up our hearts and our hands toward heaven and begin to thank him, amen, for what he is doing, not only in our local church, but what he's doing in our life. This is the kind of church I need, Brother Stevens. Amen. This is where I have hope. This is where the sky's the limit. Anything is possible. God wants to work and move in a mighty way today. Hallelujah. You don't have to fear today. Amen. God's got your back. The Lord is for you today. Amen. church I need. Thank God for our elders. Thank God for our traditions. Thank God for our past. But realize today, according to the word of God, it was never meant to control my future. Lord, my future is completely built on God's promises. I don't know what I'll face. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I know this, I know this, that God has already placed everything I need in place, that I, he'll take me through it, that I'll have victory. Amen. Amen. Oh, would you just, he's so good today. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have messages with doctrine to 
year. We're going to have messages with evangelists coming to get us to get up off our pew and move. We're going to have messages this year of good Bible studies, and we're going to have messages of, of some fluff and fun rejoicing in the Lord. Messages of faith, messages of truth. But all of them have got to be built on your faith that today is a different day than yesterday. Today is a day of new things, and I'm trusting today that God is going to help me through it and bring victory in my life. Amen. Would you lift up your hands and your hearts to God right now? Lord, we're so thankful. He's all I need, this song says. He's all I need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus is all I need. Amen, amen, amen. Lord, I love you and I praise you today. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Jesus, we praise you, Father. friendly. Amen. Let's, let's go and let's meet down at the restaurant for some food. We'll have a great day.